I'd like to discuss this very interesting, amazing molecule called coenzyme Q10. Now, what is it and where do you get it and what food has the highest amount? Coenzyme Q10 is a helper molecule that is inside your mitochondria to help you make energy, ATP, in your cells. And it is in every single cell in the body. It helps in this transformation into ATP, as well as stabilizing the membrane and preventing any type of leakage of electrons. Now, if you think about a battery, a battery is filled with this energy that is filled with electrons. And if you had a hole in the battery uh, and they leaked out, you'd get a dead battery. Same exact thing happens in your cells in relationship to coenzyme Q10. If you don't have enough of it, you're going to have a loss of energy. And I think the best way to kind of help you understand the significance of coenzyme Q10 is to talk about what happens with statins. When you take a statin, you could generate this condition called statin induced myopathies because statin drugs block the formation of coenzyme Q10. Now, what is a myopathy? Like, what type of problems can you have when you have a myopathy? Well, muscle pain, muscle weakness, and you're going to have an intolerance to exercise. You're not going to want to exercise. You're going to get tired real fast. Even if you like climb the stairs or climb a hill, you're going to run out of oxygen pretty quick. Coenzyme Q10 can increase the energy in your muscles, in your, in your entire body. It can greatly reduce your fatigue, especially when you're exercising. It actually can give you more oxygen when you exercise, so you're less winded. And it also can improve your repair uh, when you exercise. So that's going to improve your performance. Now, if you have congestive heart failure, you should definitely be taking coenzyme Q10 or be eating the foods that are high in coenzyme Q10, which I'm going to explain. But in one study with patients that had congestive heart failure, uh, much less hospitalizations, especially from pulmonary edema, uh, cardiac asthma, and arrhythmias. Now, another interesting thing about coenzyme Q10, it gets transported through the body uh, on a shuttle. And the name of that shuttle is LDL. That's right. That so-called bad cholesterol is the transportation of this coenzyme Q10. It gets bound to it, it's, and it travels to the body. And um, without that LDL, it doesn't really go anywhere. It kind of just kind of lingers around and doesn't do much. So we need the LDL. Now, another purpose of coenzyme Q10 is its ability to act as an antioxidant. So it prevents the oxidation of LDL. So this is another benefit. It gives you this anti-atherogenic effect. So it supports the arteries. So that's pretty much what coenzyme Q10 does. I mean, it does a lot of other things uh, for your brain, for the different organs. But let's just talk about what food has the most coenzyme Q10. It is heart muscle. That's right. Which is an organ meat that very few people consume. Recently, we had one of our um, cows butchered, and they wanted to know if I wanted to keep the heart muscle. And I'm like, yes, I do. I definitely want to keep all the organs, so I'm going to freeze dry that heart, and I'm going to turn it into freeze dried heart capsules. Okay, and that's one way I'm going to get my coenzyme Q10, and I'll do a video on that to uh, share my experience uh, to see what happens. But you can actually find some grass fed heart, or you can get it as supplements. Of course, find a high quality source. But out of all the organs in our bodies and other uh, animals. Uh, the heart has the most coenzyme Q10. And so another good source of coenzyme Q10 is in other organ meats like kidney, liver, brain. Coenzyme Q10 is also in fatty fish. It's even in extra virgin olive oil. When you exercise, you can increase the number of mitochondria that you have, and you can indirectly increase the amount of coenzyme Q10 that your body makes just by doing regular exercise. But a lot of people get their coenzyme Q10 from supplements. The challenge with coenzyme Q10 is it, in its bioavailability. Um, the absorption rate is like only 5%. There are other types of coenzyme Q10 that are more bioavailable, and one being something called ubiquinol. On the flip side, 
what are those things that could inhibit coenzyme Q10? Well, I already mentioned statins, but there's other things like the normal aging process can decrease the amount of coenzyme Q10, which could explain why the majority of the population on earth usually end up dying from a heart problem. But for anything connected to the heart, coenzyme Q10 is a great remedy that can help. There's other cofactors involved in the, uh, this coenzyme Q10 working uh, in the mitochondria. So if you're deficient in vitamin C, for example, or vitamin B6, or folate, or alpha lipoic acid, you could actually end up having a lowered amount of coenzyme Q10. And also, anything that messes with your mitochondria will diminish coenzyme Q10. And that includes diabetes, Alzheimer's, many, many different things. Stress is another thing that can diminish your natural pool of coenzyme Q10. But I wanted to give you a quick summary of what coenzyme Q10 is in a simple video. And if you want the complete information on supporting a healthy cardiovascular system, you should check this video right here.